I like this book mainly because it talks about technology and the power that computers currently have in our society and that they will continue having in the future. And you could tell that I enjoy computers a lot just by clicking on my channel below. Now, uh, I wanted to share with you guys my thoughts about why I really enjoyed this book. First of all, my first thought about this book was that uh, technology is really powerful. And as you can see on page 343, when... Uh, uh, the parents of Winston say, isn't it amazing what technology can do? Technology is so wonderful these days, magical and even miraculous. As we can see, this quote helps us show that technology is a really powerful thing in the book 419 because it is what caused the whole problem and it is why Laura's father died and and he got all his savings stolen. Also we can also see how technology brings people closer together yet also brings them apart at the same time on page 341 when Laura and the CEO of West there they uh they know each other because they have dealt with each other only via email However, when they see each other in real life, they don't know each other at all. Because like I said, they've only dealt with each other via email. So this, is, this shows how technology really allows people to be brought together. However, it also brings people apart. Overall, I personally think that this book has a great emphasis on technology. And I think that this book is trying to show us that as the world starts to depend more on computerized devices connected to the internet, that hackers and other unwanted people like scammers will have even more control over people. So this is telling us that everyone in this society should start to educate themselves on how to protect themselves by using their plain instinct, by using antiviruses, intrusion prevention and detection systems and ants and other software that's gonna that helps you identify these scams and I think that it's important that people get educated on this subject so that we can have technology benefiting us in the future and not causing any problems. Overall I think this book was really good and I enjoyed it a lot and I would recommend it to anyone who likes technology and computers like I do. While reading this book I was able to make many connections. The first connection I made was with Jean-Marc's Menagerie. The way I made this connection was with the idea of one thing being many things at once how we export this in Jean-Marc's Menagerie with things like the Tiger and that. In 419 by Will Ferguson, this idea was explored through the use of many things as well. For example, on page 28, we see the kitchen table in... Uh, In the apartment of Matthew Persplas, which is also a dining room table, which is also a desk, and which is also a mail sorting center. The idea of one thing being many things at once is also explored on page 225, where uh, the delta is very close and very far away at the same time. For uh, our character named Namdi. And we also see more connections like that on page 169. Where Jesus, he's not just one thing 
or two things, but he's is all things at once. Which is something we haven't seen yet in Shamak Sinashri. Like we've seen people and things be two things at once or many things at once. But here in this book, we see Jesus, which is not just one or two or many, but he's all things at once. So that got my attention. And also, we could also go to page 43. Where we, we see the events during the car crash and all that they've, and all the stuff that's going on during its analysis, that they all continue to blur into each other and seem to happen both at the same time and separately. So the events basically were seeing that they're more than one thing, they're happening at the same time, but also happening separately at the same time. So now I was also able to relate this book to Jean Marc Menagerie by imagination. And as we all know, if you've read Jean Marc Menagerie before, the main character in that book, which is uh, Jaffe, he uses his imagination a lot to imagine things. For example, he doesn't see the tiger just as a big cat, he sees it as a mythical creature that jumps through rings of fire. So, uh, in this book we also saw a few examples of imagination. I have quite a few page numbers listed on here, but some of the better ones I saw were, for example, page 82, where, uh, water's weight is both reassuring and painful so water is basically taking on both sides of the dichotomy of something being painful and being reassuring so we're also exploring dichotomies a bit here again just like in Jean Marc's Menagerie also with imagination on the two pages back on page 81 we also see uh, How uh, Laura, she's feeling as though she's walking on a globe that is now turning, and is, that she is now turning with her feet. So we can see her imagination at her travels. You're not just being in an airplane and going from place to place. To her, it's sort of like walking along a big globe. And uh, on page 40, We also see two really good examples of imagination, which I thought were some of the best in the book. The first one being, the human memory is a salamander, though it squiggles from point to point, slaloms its way and probably up walls and across ceilings. So basically this is saying that the human memory is not just the ability to remember stuff, it's more than that, it's, it squiggles from point to point, it, it's how hollows its way in probably up walls and across ceilings. Also, another example we see here is that uh, memories folded back on themselves, they clustered, they clotted, they arranged themselves not chronologically. So here again, we're seeing that memories are not just stuff you remember, but they could also be things that are not arranged chronologically, things that cluster, things that clot. So here we're exploring again this idea of imagery and how when you have characters like Chaffee who have a good imagination, just like we have many characters in this book here, you're able to see things as more than one thing at the same time and you're more and you're able to open up stuff and imagine it as more than it actually is. Now moving on from connections with Jean Marc's menagerie, 
I can also relate this book a bit to uh, Jacqueline and Hyde. Because in this book, actually when I was reading this book, and I was reading Jacqueline and Hyde at the same time, I actually started in mixing up stuff in both books. But the thing here is that both books have mystery in them. In 419, we have the mystery where they're trying to find out who sent the email and who killed Laura's father. And in Jacqueline and Hyde, we have the mystery of uh, is Doctor who killed uh, Dr. Jekyll and are Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde both the same person? So basically, I could also relate this book a little bit to Jekyll and Hyde because they sort of have the same like uh, topic of mystery and they're also all both talking about that. And uh, we also saw a lot of repetition in this book. Like I noticed, for example, Laura, she would also talk, she would always talk about her father, always telling her, you, I love you. And we can see this repetition on many pages. We can see it on page 19. We can see it on page 33. We can see it on page 40, on page 37, on page 30, and many, and probably there's even more pages that I haven't even stated. Also, another repetition we see really often in this book, probably as often as we see the previous repetition that I just mentioned, but this repetition where uh, Amania, she is trying to survive. And every time when she when she is on her journey trying to survive, she keeps telling herself, even when she struggles a lot, you must keep walking. And this is something that also gets repeated a lot. Again, I, I was able to find three pages because I think it's enough to show you. Like on page 106, page 89, page 78, and there's also many more pages where she, where when she's struggling a lot and she feels like she's... A, about to die and that she's not going to be able to keep on going, she tells herself, you must keep walking. So we see the repetition of that phrase as well a lot in the book. So overall, I have to say, this book is, is full of all kinds of different ideas and you can make all kinds of connections to other pieces that you've read in life with it and you could also make see many styles that the author has used like imagination and repetition there's also a bit of imagery in the book with uh, the imagery of windows and mirrors for example the sunglasses of the security guards uh, uh, when I mean, I entered Laura's washroom at the end only to be startled by her own reflection. And also we can see that windows and mirrors, they, they give the sense of separate lives and separate worlds mirroring each other. In particular, they show the way that when those can become mirrors. That's the whole imagery of windows and mirrors here. They're showing that when you look at a window, you can see stuff outside and you can see uh, other people in the world. Sort of how, sort of like how Laura and many other characters were able to look out their window and see these, the stories of these other people. How, however, windows, they, they can also reflect back on you. So basically, when the author was trying to do what windows here said he was trying to say that even though he, through windows you can see other people and those other people can be different than you you could also see your own reflection in the window and so the other the author will ferguson here is trying to say that windows they can both reveal part of you 
and they, they can actually reveal people that are both similar to you yet really different from you so sadly I don't have a page to support this but you guys get the idea I lost my bookmark for that page but I'll put it down in the description when I find it so uh, thanks for watching this video and hit that subscribe button down there and please comment and tell me if you like this Bye.